What's up my friend, welcome back to another video. And today we are doing something very exciting, something that you've been asking for, and that is the reaction to Thomas Ferguson's newest album, Humanity Chapter Five. And this album has been in the works for quite a while now. I believe it's been a while since we heard Chapter Four, and this will be my first time listening to Chapter Five. Again, this is something you've all been asking me for on all my different videos on my channel. You guys are like, when will you react to Chapter Five? Like, I wanna hear your thoughts on Chapter Five. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna go through the entire album, and because of copyright, I'm going to uh, do some some splitting and cutting for the YouTube version, but if you're watching the full version on uh, my Kajabi page, my landing page, then um, awesome. But uh, yeah, well, we're gonna dive in and we're gonna go one track at a time and uh, react to it. And I've also pulled up my Cordy app in case we wanna dissect any bits of it as well. Of course, coming from a composer's point of view, I really come to appreciate certain melodic, harmonic devices, even orchestration, as that's a lot of what my channel is about. So I'm really excited to dive in, start listening to some beautiful music. And before we uh, hit play, if you want to grab something along the way, if you want to grab a little gift, uh, I have something in the description box you can grab um, as my gift to you for checking out this video today. It's my ideal composing workflow guide. If you're a composer, musician, you want to write music yourself and you want to get started, um, I want to give you a really clear path to doing that. And uh, yeah, you can you can read all about that in the description box below. So again, grab that for free, totally. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's kind of dive in. So the first track we have here is Aventura. I believe that's what it's called. Um, so yeah, let's just dive right in. And you might see here at the very bottom right, we have the volume slider. I might have to adjust that as we go because I know Thomas's music is quite dynamic in general. So um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to fiddle with that so I don't blow my ears out and yours as well. And just to keep things consistent. Okay, so here we go. Here's Aventura. Really nice piano sound off the bat. And yeah, the key of C major is always such a clear open key. It feels very neutral and very um, almost innocent like because there's no infiltration of sharps and flats, you know what I mean? Yeah. Love the little tail there on, on the piano sample here as well. Very warm, very intimate sound here. This almost sounds like a bit of a chorale to me actually. Like very calm. I could imagine this orchestrated with some strings and brass. Know, some counter melodies here and there. Nice first inversion there. Yeah. Mmm, there we get that sub bass coming in there. Nice. So maybe some synth or electric guitar there in the pan left, I think. This is kind of cool. So the piano is still the main feature, but now we get that sub bass really creating that foundation on the very bottom, accentuating that harmony, and now we get the that choir lending that ethereal feeling. Very, very pretty. The only thing we might be missing now is maybe just some high strings, like a, a very high polish, a sheen, if you will, right? So we'll see if he does that. Okay, so now it sounds like the choir's coming in even stronger, actually. Yeah, really feeling in the mid-range beautifully. Because the the high, like in the high melody, the piano, is taking up that high register already. So now we have this mid-range being taken up by the choir. Um, and of course the piano chords and the left hand, those are all kind of in the low mids, if you will. like. Uh, that area, and then yeah, we get the sub bass on the very bottom to create that balanced frequency spectrum. Yeah, these little piano tinkles there, that, that reminds me of uh, Noir, or maybe like Chroma, or, you know, one of those piano libraries where there's that particles engine. I wouldn't be surprised if Thomas used that. But a really beautiful start here. Just super simple, relatively acoustic, right? Using the piano as the basis, and then moving on to the choir and the sub bass. All right, moving on to Iron Will. Nice adventure start. Always a classic string ostinato, adventure style, right? Brass theme in the French horns. Again, in C major as well, so nice and anthemic. Uh, there's a bit of consistency there with Aventura as well. Mm. I actually expected the arrangement to open up with even more 2D stuff, like maybe more percussion and choir, but we actually went the opposite way. So now it's a lot more childlike and innocent with the mallets at the very top, and now we have the piano, really intimate, felty sound, similar to Aventura. So now the strings coming in to double the piano, it just strengthens the melody and allows more instrumentation to come in and support the overall arrangement. Really pretty. So something Thomas does all the time is, at the end of a phrase, he'll slip to the first inversion of the chord before rising up to the four chord. So it's like one, six going to four. I really love that little device. Something I, I tend to do myself as well because it leads you stepwise up to that motion. Ooh, that was pretty. Let's see. So in this key of C major, we're going from the two to the four to the five. And then instead of going to one, 
we actually go down to the flat three. Now we're in the key of E flat major, so now we've modulated. Here's our first big key change of the album. And the instrumentation has changed here as well, I believe. It's I, I forgot what the instrumentation was before the melody, but now we have this string melody that's really lush, really full. Gotta show the woodwind some love, of course. Beautiful flute. There we go. Nice big crescendo transition into back to C major as well. Now return of that brass theme. Response with the kind of trailer percussion as well. So now we got the piano and string melody doubled together, and then we got the, the vocal counter melody coming in between as well. All wrapped up um, with the percussion and the, the pads around it. Uh, lots of strings, lots of brass and stuff happening as well. E flat major, there we go. Uh, five chord, five two, six? No, to the two, okay. Nice little decrescendo there. So another way he could have done it is if he swelled up like da -da, and then instantly, you know, everything came away and you, maybe you just have this long reverb tail and then the dispersed instrumentation comes back. But in this case, he actually uh, created that expectation of that softness coming back through that decrescendo in the instrumentation. And now we have a nice um, ending here with the piano. Really stereo vocals here, cool. Kind of makes sense because the piano is more up the center, right? So having more elements to encapsulate around it uh, really fits that spectrum. And I like that as well because it started in C major this piece, but now we end in E flat major, but on the sixth chord, which is a C minor chord. So in a way, we're starting on C and ending on C. That's pretty cool. Nice. Okay, piano and strummed acoustic in the back. Pan more to the left. So I would expect to have maybe more of a melodic instrument coming up the center very soon. Although the piano is the melodic instrument here, it's a bit pan to the right. So maybe we'll see something in the center in, in a, shortly. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting, but sure. The horns are definitely up the center here. Very, very strong. That's one way to hit a climax, I guess, you know? <laughs> Merith always has such beautiful vocals on uh, Thomas's albums. No, I want to hire her to sing on my music. Uh, just a qu really quick pause here. Um, it's really not easy to have a solo vocal, especially in the mid-range, stand out while a huge arrangement is going on in the background, right? If you imagine like a ton of instruments playing at the same time and one so solo vocalist is trying to sing so her voice is heard in the front, that's really difficult. So I think it's a combination of the voice being relatively close up. And because it's so close up to our ears, it feels like it almost feels like she's singing right next to us, right? Because the voice is so clear, it's so detailed, and the rest of the orchestra is more pushed back in the background. So Thomas kind of chose mic positions or recorded a real orchestra in a way where um, everything felt more supportive because it felt like it was standing behind Mara's voice, right? And the other thing is like frequency scooping. So you probably want to scoop out all the different frequencies that Merit's voice is occupying, take those frequencies out from the other instruments so they're not fighting with Merit's vocals. That's also really important because you do want a balanced sort of frequency spectrum. Um, this can be done tastefully by ear, of course. Uh, you could also use a frequency analyzer, um, something I personally do sometimes. Uh, but yeah, just a really impressive technique here having such a delicate solo instrument being the voice standing out amongst such a big, uh, you know, heavy arrangement, it's, it's no easy task for sure. Now this is a little bit uh, of a similar case, but we have that uh, woodwind in the top. And because it's really the only instrument up in that frequency range, it, it can stand out more easily on its own. And the rest of the arrangement is just kind of accompanying it, right? So. This little theme here reminds me of some of the past humanity themes a little bit. Maybe it's chapter four, chapter three, I don't know. Nice, we get those electric guitars in the back. Reminds me of arc one sort of uh, electric guitars there. Okay, I was, I, I thought I had the melody, but almost. That high A flat is not easy to hit. Yeah, like she's improvising, I'm improvising, right? This chord progression is makes it really easy for you to create some cool licks on top. Yeah, and there's that classic sort of transition back into the sparse arrangement. Um, having that really dense arrangement kind of crescendo up to that peak and then suddenly it just strips back into a uh, more sparse arrangement here. So now we just have the woodwind on top with the guitar in the back on the left. 
beautiful. Yeah, so this piece has a really great balance of like denser arrangements, sparse arrangements. Um, and one other thing is I really like how um, Thomas is not afraid to double the melody in octaves or in unison with different instruments, especially when the uh, arrangement's getting bigger and, and more full, right? Because you definitely need that strength for that theme to cut out through the mix. Um, so it just makes sense to have more elements or more instruments assigned to that main theme if you want it to really come through. Um, so yeah, really, really a varied piece here in mem uh, mem memoria, memoria. Um, let's move on to Reflections of You. Very like Yoruma-like so far for this one. Yeah, like it, it sounds like Thomas is sitting in a studio or at his piano just kind of improvising. Very classical, traditional chord progressions. Poppy as well. Okay, that's a cool one. Going to the E minor chord before going to F major there. So a slight bit of um, non-diatonicism. Five, two, one. Oh, okay, I expected, her to, I expected him to go to like G major, but he went to a G minor seven chord. So right now he's kind of in the key of B flat major. So it's like six, four, one, five. In case you're curious. So it's like six, four, one, five. Um, very, very classic. You can do this really in any key and it just makes the whole uh, basis of your composition really easy to follow because it's such a predictable chord progression and one that's used very often, but it works a lot, right? I bet there are a lot of people who want to uh, learn how to play this for solo piano. Going from like basically the five of the G minor, uh, D7 basically, instead of resolving to one though, he resolves up a semitone to E flat major. So it's like a five to six progression. Yeah, that one little pause right there was like, what, what, what's happening? Is, is something wrong? And then it's like, oh, all these strings are coming in to create this big climax. So that makes sense. He wants to prepare us for that moment, right? Very pretty. Yeah, one, one interesting thing about this piece is this theme doesn't really feel like a theme. It almost feels like just a set of arpeggio or like broken chords that kind of go back and forth. So this is more of like a texture piece with the piano playing lots of, uh, you know, tinkling notes rather than having a single memorable theme, which is equally as valid as having a strong theme all the way through. It doesn't really matter, but it gets that mood across, right? Okay, I'm already getting like um, Chronicles of Narnia vibes here, like the battle scene, uh, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. So you got the string ostinato and the low strings and then layered strings and vocals in the top. Again, that doubled unison melody. And the percussion comes in to really strive and bring up the, that tempo, the intensity. Ooh, very cool. To D minor. There we go. So five to one in D minor. That's a really cool transition technique there. One other thing that's helping the vocal really stand out here is the addition of that doubled melody up the octave. I think it's in the strings. So it's not super, super audible, but you can hear how her melody is uh, doubled up that octave. It just accentuates it a little bit more. And then the other elements are kind of pan more left and right. So it gives the, the vocal um, a more room up the center of the uh, stereo spectrum, which is really nice. Did I hear kimchi fight? What am I, am I, am I just tripping? Wait. Okay, I, I'm, I swear she did not say kimchi fight, like the Korean cabbage, but maybe you can let me know what she actually said there. By the way, one thing I want to mention is that this melody uh, has a very anthemic but strong marching quality to it. And I think it's mainly due to the fact that the rhythm of the theme is so um, consistent. It's a lot of da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Right, so if we're thinking of 4-4 four, four, and that melody is all quarter notes, that's like a long series of quarter notes. And so you could argue that with a bit more variety in the rhythm, the melody could be even more effective and sound more conversational. But in this way, when you have such a consistent rhythm in the melody, it makes it even more memorable in a way and stronger because every single beat is being accentuated, all four beats of the bar. So it's, it's just a different way to do the melody, but... Um, it, it really gives it that marching anthemic feel, right? Because it's when, when you're marching, it's that consistent march, march, march rhythm. So um, that kind of gives me that vibe there. And that's your guitar going to the solo. That's cool. We haven't heard a guitar solo yet, I think. So uh, yeah, definitely welcome one. And then everyone comes in for the last hurrah. Nice. Merith comes in, um, male vocals, the drum kit all the instrumentation. Yeah, you could definitely tell this track is more compressed, but it kind of needs it with all that instrumentation going on. All right, Heroica. This is in the key of D minor. Very rich and heroic. Very thick, lush instrumentation already, mainly the strings and the brass. Again, that entrance of that, you know, those drums and the brass, it's so, so sudden, but it's satisfying at the same time. It like really wakes you up. Like, 
we're going on an adventure, let's go, right? Oh, nice, that little uh, chromatic movement to G, G sharp A, using the secondary dominant there of the A minor chord, or A major chord. Can't resist the beautiful string theme. And it's so clear because, again, it's in the higher register, so there's nothing really uh, blocking it right now. That's kind of the sole feature in this section here. Ooh. Big crescendo, nice, into this big pulsing section. Yeah, that's kind of a cool device there. So like going from B flat to G sharp diminished to A major basically. So it's like B flat to G sharp to A. It's like you're kind of encapsulating the A and then rising to that A. I like that. Classic Thomas here, like with the super anthemic theme at the top and then um, really full orchestration on the bottom playing a traditional chord progression, but it allows that melody to shine on the very top. Ooh. I like this increase in the harmonic rhythm here. It increases the, uh, the energy and the intensity even more, actually. Basically changing the chord on B3, instead of changing one chord per bar, now we have basically two chords per bar. And then, yeah, just leading to that final D chord, or that D unison octave. Um, nice little ending there. Very cool. Let's hear Dream Garden next. Hmm. So, yeah, kind of what you expect from the name. It's kind of more mellow and, you know, light, delicate. Nice little break from all the intensity we've just heard so far. In come the strings, very nice. Now here's that string theme. String counter melody, uh, cellos, in, and then the violins kind of come in and continue. Yeah, these definitely sound like live strings. Um, I believe Thomas usually records his strings live, so you can definitely hear the difference for sure. And if not, it's just really good programming, so. This is like Danny Elfman vibes a little bit. So you get those string pizzicatos rising up, really, uh, really pretty. More ethereal and fairy tale like, almost like James Newton Howard in a way. This is one of my favorites so far. It's so much more adventurous and experimental and light than the others. So one to five here in D flat major to six. Back to three, I would assume so, and then four maybe, G flat. And then maybe the one to, yeah, to D flat. And then four again. No, then to five, okay. Yeah, I just love how Thomas is really stretching and playing around here with a harmonic rhythm. Like the chords don't always change in the same place, you know? Some chords are being held longer to establish a sense of resolution, while other transition chords are a lot faster, and sometimes he doesn't use any transition chords at all in certain phrases. It's really, really pretty. And so it allows the arrangement of the instrumentation to also vary as well, like play around with different textures, tinkling on the top, the string, you know, string passages. All of it plays together so beautifully. Yeah, I actually think this is my favorite track so far. Really pretty. Um, probably one of the mo more underrated ones on this album, for sure. Very close upfront vocals, pan heard left and right. Um, yeah, not, not very much reverb here, so. Oh, where did the bass go? He stripped it away. I want it back. I want those warm strings on the bottom. There we go. A, B, G sharp, to A. Oh, that's so pretty. And you get this constant E drone, and uh, sorry, C sharp drone in the middle there, really establishing the key C sharp minor. But the vocals are sitting just above that and the strings in the back. So there's a lot of stereo placement and mic positions that he's playing around with here. Really creative stuff. I honestly personally could do without the percussion because it already sounds so nice on its own. But I understand, it's, it has that trailer vibe, right? So adding in some electric guitar with this, uh, this choir, very interesting combination. It's like more of the modern grit with more of the, uh, you know, ethnic vocals, That's which was more raw and rustic, right? So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what they're singing, but now it sounds a lot more modern and trailerish, especially with that percussion, the beat, and uh, the electric guitars, right? Little break, more sparse arrangement again, just the light, lighter percussion, mid-range stuff. The chromatic motion, E, F, F sharp, that's pretty. More, lots of secondary dominance being used here in this in this uh, album so far. Come on, five to one in C sharp minor, and there we go. Yeah, I like this grittier side of Thomas. It's uh, like we're used to hearing the orchestral elements being processed in a more trailerized way in a lot of his work, but I, I like to hear that that darker, grittier side as well. Because that that's just not the type of music I write all the time, so it's very different for me, and I like, like it a lot. It's a really cool contrast too, because this guitar solo is like super mono as well. All the elements are more stereo, right? So a really good contrast. 
and then everything comes in, kind of like we heard in an earlier track, everything at the end just kind of comes in 2T, um, yeah, super strong ending. Nice. I don't know if it's Thomas shredding on his guitar himself, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then ending with that Middle Eastern vibe to finish. Very cool. All right, Kingmaker. Mm, again, picking back off of that uh, dreamy, ethereal, magical vibe here. Fantasy, right, sort of thing. Right, with the woodwinds, the strings, the choir. Very, like, elven-like. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a twist. This is like an action scene, like trying to run away from the enemy. Yeah, lots of chord changes here. Lots of sequencing here in the, in the harmony. Yeah, really creative harmonic devices happening here. I've mentioned this before, but one thing I do like about Thomas's music quite a bit is that the music is easily analyzable in terms of there's not tons and tons of poly chords or polytonality or anything like that. Like Thomas takes one idea and expands it to a really beautiful piece in a way that it's still digestible all the way through and it doesn't feel like it's uh, super, super complicated. Like there's, a, there's usually a clear structure to it um, very clear elements, and it's layered and arranged very well. Easy to follow. Ooh, I like the removal of that percussion there. And then it comes back, right? So it gives our ears a little bit of a break before it instantly comes back into it and strengthens it. This time we take away the mid-range, that all, stuff is all stripped away, so we just have the top. Uh, the mid-range and the vocals kind of doubled in octaves, and then the percussion on the bottom. Now the string shorts there in the mid-range. That kind of fills in the harmonic spectrum and gives us the rhythmic uh, variety. That's cool. Yeah, lots of, um, but a lot of the melody notes are kind of moving with the harmony, especially that dun, 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 like the, a chain of like three chords in a row. Sometimes the melody is just going by itself. The, the chord changes maybe once per bar, but when you really want to emphasize certain moments of chord changes, um, you can do that, like have a certain melody note line up with the chord change at the same time. So it really has that, uh, again, that March-like anthemic declamatory sort of feeling. So classic Thomas there again. Then we have Away With Your Fairies. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, kind of like, what is it, Gaelic, right? Sort of that countryside sort of feel. Yeah, the cellos, I think, doubling with the violas, violins. So it makes it fuller and deeper and darker as well, instead of just the violins, which is a little thinner. Ooh, this is kind of new, actually. So yeah, this album really feels like a blend of influences for Thomas, actually. Like, he's experimenting a lot with different stylistic things, and so yeah, we got that ethnic stuff in track 8 with the, uh, with the rock elements, right? But notice how the harmonic information is still relatively simple the whole time. So again, it allows the melody to shine through, the instrumentation to experiment, and not give us too much information all at once. Okay, those brass stabs are still there, but now they're combined with the choir on top of it too. Maybe it's the same choir as the Zunia track, I'm not sure, but kind of sounds like it could be. Yeah, you hear the French horns have the theme more on the left, and then the trumpet's kind of interacting uh, call and response on the right, so that stereo spread there is really nice too. Now we remove the percussion, now it's just the piano, you know, strings, brass, and a little synth there as well with the arp. Oh, come on! There we go. He just gave us two extra bars of percussion just to hold that suspense that touch longer. Come on, Thomas. You know, you know us very, very well. Mm -hmm. Just a classic ending there with the strings, and then that's just nice one final hit at the very end. Very, very cool. Beautiful track. All right, guys, we're almost there. One last day. So very traditional chord progression here so far with the flute on the top. This is a very common modulation technique and when we're talking about MIDI orchestration is taking your mod wheel and riding the string chord up for one bar and then bringing it down the second bar. So it really feels like, ah, right? So it's really pretty. And now we have the violin mandolin on top to take over. Sounds even more passionate than the flute, which was more intimate and exposed. Now it feels like it's more of that concert setting. Um, yeah, really just letting that theme soar through. I'm not sure I like those rebows as much, though, of the strings there. I feel like they could be a tad smoother, but that's just a personal preference. Yeah, the percussion's quite heavy here, really thumping through. Um, and you get the string out on the top, again, the, the mid-range elements as well, but 
it's not quite as busy as some of the other tracks with their vocals, so it can come through a little easier too. I really like this ascending chord progression, and now we're going down. Um, oh, now it's going back up again. A flat. Now going down again. Okay. Yeah, so that's really pretty there. Uh, so it's like you would expect it to go, and then maybe two minor to the one, but in this case, we're going from to the three in the case of E flat major, and then we go right. So you go basically go up to the six but you go through it using the secondary dominant. So um, yeah, lots of secondary dominants like we mentioned before we've been using this out. It's a very similar theme to the first time, except now we're in a different key. So the energy changes, but the overall musical feeling is quite similar. I like this track because it feels a bit more slower paced, um, especially with the percussion. It's not as busy, right, those patterns. So it feels like we're appreciating the moment more and it allows this guitar solo to be uh, to take more of the spotlight, if you will. So yeah, I, I like this track a lot, actually. Yeah, if the track was longer, I would have expected one like final chorus with them singing together again, but in this case, he kind of takes it down and lets it die away through the decrescendo. So that's really nice, too. All right, we're down to, I think, the last track, because I think the One Last Day instrumental is the same track, but just the instrumental. So let's check out Aventura Suite, because Aventura was the first one. So this is kind of like a recap, I guess. I always like sweets because it feels like a culmination of lots of ideas, but you still get that central main theme from the track that it's inspired by, right? Really strong horn theme here, but all the elements swelling in together with that choir, especially. Nice. That series of chord changes there, not diatonic, but G minor to D to E flat to B flat to D. So now the piano's back because we had the piano in Aventura, but now we also have some string eighth note patterns, basically. Yeah, like that 4-5-1 progression is always so nice, but because he's using the C-sharp to make the A major chord, we get that harmonic sound, right? And then we get that resolution back to the 1, so it makes it so strong. And again, using this doubling technique, doubling uh, an octave apart of that theme to make it stronger through a dense arrangement, ascending chord progression. Yeah, we've, we've had very few moments in this album where it's like literally just one instrument on its own. We've had the beginning where it's just the piano, but... We've now we get the choir a little bit on its own, and then the other instruments come in with it. Strings, woodwinds, before the percussion and the brass come back. Very anthemic, very cinematic, if I could use that word, with the choir and the brass and strings all together. Just shows that you don't really need the percussion all the time, right? Yeah, really just landing on this D chord every single time. It's like we really need that G minor resolution right here. But instead, he goes up to that 6 again, that E flat chord, so another deceptive cadence. And now it's very innocently. Yeah, using quite a lot of vocals in this album, actually, which I, which I do like. It's more of that human element, and it feels more raw, right? More passionate, more emotional, and it's so... Yeah, this is kind of like the sweet part here, where it, it almost feels improvised. But obviously, it's a very deliberate theme and chord progression, but... It feels more free. There's not a very steady drum pattern. Here, it feels like Thomas is taking more liberties to just expand and really uh, give us a lot of harmonic information, which I, I'm a big fan of personally. And now we kind of go more into the, the standard stuff. So now the, the you know standard chord progressions kind of come back, A, F, C, D minor, F major sort of stuff. But very, yeah, very full here in the arrangement. Lots of strings and brass kind of in the mid-range, especially those horns. Uh, warming it up and creating that fuller sound. Ooh, and now we go to C minor, yeah. So every time he makes a modulation, like he transitions to a new key, it always feels very earned because there's a lot of respect paid to the build-up of every single section, right? Um, yeah. Like usually he'll repeat a certain chord progression many times in a certain key before twisting our expectations and then landing in a new key and it E flat major to B flat so I'm expecting you know B flat uh, E flat major chords A flat major and then it's like B major to F major you don't see that every day and now to D to E flat to C minor to G major that was very interesting I have not heard that before yeah, so a really interesting twist there. 
to then lead us out of that section and now to this calm section nearer to the end. I like. I actually like that there's no, uh, not too many vocals here either at, at this point. Okay, now there are, but <laughs> it gave us a little bit of a break there and it allowed us to kind of appreciate the orchestral stuff more. But now that the vocals are back in, it feels like things are going to start to build back up and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a big climax at the very end. But so far, um, yeah, I feel like Thomas is starting to build the energy back up slowly, but you know, slowly but surely. Nice, nice traditional A flat ending there, cadence. This this all sounds um, like a church to me, actually. Uh, like they're singing in a in a big church, and it feels almost sacred in a way. Very full, very uh, delicate use of the harp there. The woodwind runs counter melodies and the strings, the violins, and then things come back down to A flat, major, there we go. This is giving me Humanity Chapter 3 vibes with from the Love Suite. I uh, really love that piece, but this is reminding me of that quite a bit. Hmm. Sounds like we might not get a huge climax at the very ending thing. Maybe, maybe this is actually ending on a, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, maybe, maybe we are ending on a more quiet, uh, reserved note rather than something super bombastic and you know really upfront. But this is really nice. It's very passionate with the choir. So this is kind of like a 2D section where all the instruments we've heard before essentially come in. Um, but it's not the energy is not like a 10. It's like at a seven or eight uh, because they're focused more on the intention and emotion of the music rather than trying to blast every single note that they're hearing. Right? It's more of a beautiful melody rather than a super declamatory one. And now we end on this really pretty uh, percussion and arp at the very end. Nice. Yeah, and then ending again with sort of that, that particle feeling, uh, like the particles engine in one of the piano libraries I talked about before. That's a really beautiful way to wrap it up. Let me just quickly double check. Is this last track pretty much the same? Yeah, cool. So yeah, um, one thing I forgot to mention is I feel like this album is mixed and mastered quite a lot better than some of the previous ones I've heard. I forgot it, if it was maybe chapter four or maybe chapter two. I think chapter three was really well processed and mixed, but one of the earlier ones, I think uh, the tracks were slightly over compressed in my opinion. Uh, things felt slightly over processed and this one strikes that great balance between the natural, the acoustic, and having the, those trailer elements still feel authentic and, and gritty and warm while being uh, more of that modern touch, right? More having that, uh, that modern processing at the same time. So I feel like the processing isn't as heavy handed this time around. It feels like there was more thought in letting the music speak for itself, if that makes sense. Um, those ideas come through in a really natural, beautiful way, and I really appreciate that as well. Lots of gorgeous themes here as well that you could kind of hear that uh, have been reused several times, especially in the suite, I guess, right? It's a great chance for Thomas to kind of go through, use some of the favorite themes and bring them back in a, in a culmination, almost like a medley of sorts, and that's really pretty as well. Um, but yeah, Really, really lovely. I, I can see why you guys have recommended this album to me, and uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, it's always nice to hear some new music. I haven't listened to Thomas's music in quite a while since chapter four, so it was nice to kind of get back into it. And yeah, Thomas has a very unmistakable sound, I think, uh, at, at least in the Humanity series. Um, more standard chord progressions. Of course, there's some experimentation here or there, but more or less generally chord progressions that are... Uh, classically based, sometimes even poppy in nature, but then allowing the melodies to expand, recycling those chord progressions, repeating them multiple times, trying different modulations, um, nice intense orchestration combined with um, sparser instrumentation to let the themes come through. It's, it's quite varied. There's a lot of stuff going on, but it's also controlled and it feels very well thought out, very well planned, fleshed out in a, in a natural way. And uh, yeah, this, this was a great listening experience all the way through. And I hope you enjoyed uh, maybe hearing some of these insights that Thomas put into his music. Um, I certainly did enjoy it as well. And uh, yeah, let me let me know your thoughts. If you're watching on YouTube, what you thought of this little reaction. If you're watching on, uh, if you're watching the full version, thank you for sticking all the way through. I appreciate that as well. But uh, yeah, if you want to check out my, again, my free guide down below on how to kind of get started with your composing journey. If you are a composer or maybe you're not and, and you want to start writing music, 
um, I want to give you kind of a structured framework that you can follow to make your uh, music making journey as simple and as seamless as possible. So you can grab it totally free as my gift to you below in the description box there. And I hope you enjoy it. It's helped a lot of my students. I hope it helps you as well. And uh, yeah, that is chapter five. When chapter six comes out, I think that's the final chapter. Uh, we'll definitely do that as well. And I probably will need you guys to remind me to do that too, because my filming schedule is quite stacked at the moment in terms of there's a lot of videos to film. So I'm, ha I'm happy I could uh, make some time for this one. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.